Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account, and if you check the mail, that is right, the patch notes are up, which means the Awakened version of Leica is going to be here tomorrow, guys. Now overall, over on the test server, we are seeing her used in a lot of different formations. As we continue building and developing these Awakened heroes, I wanted to cover a tier list because this is a question that I've been getting every single day over on YouTube. We've seen it on Reddit, we've seen it on Discord. So I'm hoping I'm gonna clarify some of those with the tier list. Um, for just the Awakened Heroes, guys. So literally, it is just gonna be a couple heroes in this tier list based on the Awakened priority. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, guys, so here it is uh, with Tier Maker. I go ahead and I put this together on a regular basis. Now, looking at the priority, now, the one thing you have to remember with this tier list are these are the Awakened Heroes. These are the best heroes within AFK Arena, um, usually the strongest power-wise. And I'm gonna go through exactly why I kind of tiered them where I did I'm um, starting with the first one, the Awakened version of Belinda. Now, a lot of the tier list has to do with utility. When you look at different game modes, the Awakened version of Belinda is used in the Twisted Realm, the Cursed Realm, the Nightmare Corridor, utilized in the Treasure Scramble, utilized as a primary hero within the campaign formations, tower formations, Light Bear Tower, and also um, the Temple Rift. She is literally used in every single aspect in AFK Arena, and she is the primary damage dealer within those formations, making it very imperative. That is the reason why we said from the beginning, she is such a broken hero. Um, the amount of damage that she puts out, the boost that she gives, the buffs, even the methodology, guys, she works without even being completely built out. The damage with her is still considerably high, even without having her completely built out. Then we get into the Awakened version of Sophia, which of course is the second Awakened support hero that we've seen. Um, doing a significant amount of damage, but also as a buffer, as a support hero, the shielding, the energy, she has made her way again, similar to the Awakened version of Belinda, into pretty much every formation that we see. Utilization within the Treasure Scramble, within the Cursed Realm, the Nightmare Corridor, even the Temple Rift, and formations within the campaign, as well as the Towers. Utility with her super, super high. And we're seeing the same with Laika. Now Laika, of course, even though she is a ranger, Laika is coming out of the gate. We have energy regeneration. We have a ton of team buffs, which is the reason why it is imperative, guys, to build the heroes like this. Because not only the damage that she's doing in the cursed realm currently on the test server, she is pulling almost 15 billion damage which is higher than we've seen Belinda, higher than we've seen Baden, higher than we've seen Matria. Um, she is so far putting up the most damage that we have seen of any Awakened hero, which again is kind of crazy, clocking in at almost 15 billion damage in that game mode. Now, in my opinion, guys, she is gonna be another one just based on the build, doing damage when she enters with the energy, with everything else she brings from you know the, the dodge reduction to the accuracy increase, to the magical suppression in the magical pierce. Um, she is going to be one in a team that is going to be reckoned with. Not only that, with the buffing aspect, is she does put out a considerable amount of damage in those formations. So again, she is going to be a priority. Don't know if she's going to de dethrone Belinda. My thoughts, in my opinion, guys, is Belinda and Laika are going to run in independent teams. They're probably not going to run together. They could in certain circumstances. But overall, it seems like Laika is going to be a team in her own. The Awakened version of Belinda is going to be the same, meaning these are going to be two primary heroes to have with formations when it comes to a lot of different game modes. Now, looking at the S+, and again, I don't want you to think that this is any lower tier, really. Um, just looking, again, at the priorities, which Laika could be number two in the priority, um, depending exactly where she falls before Sophia, but it depends who you're building and who you already have built. Looking at our S+, plus, we have the Awakened version of Athelia. Again, looking at game modes, really the driving force within the Celestial Tower, but also seeing her as the best in slot within the Treasure Scramble, also seeing it within the Cursed Realm and the Nightmare Corridor as well. Also run a lot within formations, within the campaign formations. So again, utility-wise, the hero has a ton of utility, which is the same with the Awakened version of Baden. As we've seen with the current uh, Cursed Realm that we have going on right now, is really the, the priority within some of those teams. Now, it's interesting with the Awakened Heroes, guys, and this is kind of why I put it on the S Plus tier, um, is there's a couple that we're not seeing carried into the Nightmare Corridor as the best-in-slot heroes. So I know um, 
in some of the iterations or some of the the runs they might be in some of the teams some of them they are not present in the teams at all still utilize utilization within the cursed realm but again there are a couple teams where these heroes are slowly kind of coming out of some of those formations then of course matria matria is another hero guys utility wise works incredibly well still running the campaign treasure scramble still seen as the best in slot and also within, again, the Curse Realm, the Nightmare Corridor, seeing a lot of utility in there with the damage that she is putting out. But it is less than we used to be seeing. And I, I really want to stress that, guys, is where Matria was the best in slot team without, you know, any doubt. Because of the time and effort that it takes to build out these heroes, that's the reason why you really have to be careful about the tier list. Because even looking today, if I was starting AFK Arena today, and I had my time emblems. We know they are significantly higher to come by. When you look at the Awakened version of Solus, when you look at Thane, when you look at Brutus, even when you look down here at the Awakened version of Taylene, they're probably not ones that I would build at all at this point in AFK Arena. Probably even the same with Matria, just because we know there is still going to be another Graveborn Awakened hero that is going to be coming. But again, being a newer player to AFK Arena, I would build up Belinda first, probably Sophia or Laika in a second version. By the time you get that, the third hero is already going to be out. Or by the time you actually finish probably one of these, the next hero is already going to be out that we have kind of seen. Now looking at our S tier, again, the Awakened Heroes guys are very, very strong. Solus still holding on to a couple formations. I feel like once we start getting a couple more new um, support heroes that she's probably going to be shelved. Um, we've also seen that with Nevi, where Nevi is not really built out very much anymore um, because they used to run hand in hand. We're not seeing a ton of utility in there. Now the Awakened version of Thane still utilized within the Treasure Scramble. We see him in the Nightmare Corridor. Cursed Realm, unfortunately, um, he is not there at all. Um, campaign formations, usually not there at all. A lot of game modes, again, they're starting to fall out, which is the same with Brutus. Um, Brutus and Anasta used to run all the time together. It was actually a best-in-slot team. Now they've already dropped down to the sub-team, looking at the tier list and the things that we have going on, which, again, as we continue to get more of the four primary factions, as we continue into the next Awakened version, or next year in the third version, or the third uh, series, of Awakened Heroes, I feel like these heroes are going to slowly continue to lose their place within the tier list and probably just niche formations that you could really find them. Then, of course, guys, we go a little bit lower. The Awakened version of Taylene really used in the tower. That is about all that we're seeing. Even within the stall team, it's interesting because all, everyone in the stall team is running the original version of Taylene. They're not using the Awakened version. Um, for the stall team with Flora and Thorin and a couple other heroes. So it's interesting, again, to see that we're not seeing the Awakened version of Taylene in there. Really short of the tower. She's not used anywhere that I'm aware of. Again, maybe a one-off niche formation that you already have her built and you already do have her maxed out that we're seeing her every now and then. And then down here, guys, the Awakened version of Aziz. Kind of meh, just because of we need him, I believe, for one formation right now within the Cursed Realm. Um, just as the SP effect. You don't even have to have him built. You can have literally one copy of him. There's no reason to build him. And I built him before, had him built before we did the swap. He actually messed up a couple formations within the Hypo Tower because he doesn't die. Um, meaning combinations that he's running with Lucretia, he cannot do very well because again, he is a hero that will not die. The SP effect can affect a couple things in there, making Lucretia a lot less effective. All right, guys, so it's a very, very short tier list, but I definitely wanted to cover it. Again, it is very early when it comes to Leica, but I feel overall we're going to see her used in a ton of different game modes. Again, we have not seen a hero that put out as much damage right now as we've seen with Leica. Um, again, bringing a lot of team buffs, bringing a lot of buffs, a lot of debuffs, a lot of dynamic when it comes to AFK Arena, which makes me think that she is going to be, again, used in a considerable amount of places. And honestly, guys, when it comes to the Awakened Heroes, I know they are super expensive to build, but it just takes time. If you're working on a current Awakened Hero right now, I wouldn't rush and just build out Leica for getting your other one, or you're going to have a bunch of half-built Awakened Heroes. Just kind of build them in the priority. And I know a lot of players that have kind of like the, the Thane built or the Brutus built, and as they continue to power creep, as we continue to see new heroes, they are slowly replacing some of the older ones. 
But all right, guys, so that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.